In my life, I've had two big coming outs. My first coming out as gay was hard enough for my parents, but sucking a little dick can be understandable. <laughs> you could still date a doctor. <laughs> but turning down your grandmother's brisket because you're vegetarian? That was pure sacrilege. <laughs> First of all, I want to explain what meat means to my family. My family was matzo ball soup and brisket Jewish. We were platters of pickles, white fish, and corned beef after a bris Jewish. My dad's side was chased out of Russia. Mom's side survived the camps. Meat was a metaphor for the triumph of the Jewish people over all our suffering. We ate meat because Hitler would not want us to eat meat. <laughs> Every roast beef sandwich was a brick removed from an Auschwitz crematorium. The gravy-soaked turkey was a shield for our Russian ancestors against the pogroms. Every globule of fat dripping off the steaks was an opus praising the bravery of the Warsaw Ghetto. My family had a love affair with all things dead. <laughs> Cooked and served on a platter with a side of kogel because that is how we celebrated our survival. Some of my earliest memories of my mother emerging from the kitchen asking, who wants to eat the pulky? My brothers would fight and snarl over the chicken's neck. I thought, ew, that's a chicken's neck. <laughs> Once, I found a Jewish delicacy I thought I enjoyed, and after inhaling several kishkas with a mouth half full, I asked my mother, what is kishka? And I spat out the minced intestine. Oh. See, Jews don't make things like meatloaf, and there's no Bubby's hamburger helper. That's what the guys do. There's no Yiddish word for spam. We have kishka and pulkis and schmaltz and fleisch and krebelach and kapikalach and anything you need a cold to say. <laughs> we were also kosher. And if you don't know what kosher is, it's when God commanded Jews to only eat strange things. Like, <laughs> like fish with scales <laughs> and gills and hoof mammals that regurgitate their food. And it, it meant when I did eat meat, it was always with my family and always in a very specific situation. The hardest part about being veggie was my dad was a butcher. <laughs> and so was his father, who I'm named after. And if, if you visit DC, you'll find this. <laughs> So you can see how vegetarianism would be the worst kind of abomination in my family. <laughs> Going into work with my dad didn't help either. I'm not gonna lie, I love the hamburger grinder. <laughs> but what boy doesn't love rampant destruction? No matter what you threw in there, hamburgers would squirt out. <laughs> But the rest of it, sorting chicken carcasses and tubs of bloody meat, left me gagging. I've also never really liked meat. A part of me just didn't get it. When I was a kid, I used to carve all the fat and gristle off the lamb chops, getting it down to one tiny bite, while everyone else slurped the marrow out of the bones. I asked my mother, Mommy, were these the same lambs we took photos with at the petting zoo? <laughs> And she said, no, these are different lambs. <laughs> but I was on to something. But it was kosher airplane meals that officially began my hate affair with meat. I remember being served after everyone else in the plane had received their delicious cuisine. Their food seemed gourmet comp by comparison. Yes, I was actually jealous of their airplane food. 
Then everyone would stare as they brought out our triple-wrapped kosher meal. Resurrected out of a deep storage from a Chabad house somewhere in Queens. <laughs> it was a zombie meal that was summoned back to life. Soggy bread, plaster desserts, cardboard vegetables, and then the meat. Gray turkey lying half frozen in a pool of orange juice. <laughs> I watched the woman next to me tear into her savory, fully cooked vegetarian entree and vowed never again to eat a kosher meal on a plane. <laughs> the last time I ate chicken was at Kosher Delight, the McDonald's of kosher restaurants. <laughs> kosher and delight are two words that should never be used together. <laughs> but I never got to eat fast food growing up. McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell, all forbidden by Jewish law. <laughs> This was as close as I was gonna to get to the delicious fast food that seemed so orgasmically happy in the commercials. Mm -hmm. I bit into the chicken nugget and found a chewy chunk of something. It was gummy and gristly and I thought a, a beak, a foot, <laughs> a deformed, underdeveloped chicken fetal twin. <laughs> My mind raced, and then I remembered the PETA sticker from college. I am not a nugget. Showing an adorable baby chicken. I thought, correct, chick. You are not a nugget. And you are most certainly not a kosher chicken nugget. And that was the last time I ate poultry. And I realized that it was finally time to tell my parents the awful truth. It was time to come out of the meat locker. <laughs> As a vegetarian. During my first coming out, when I told them I was gay, my mother didn't quite accept it. Don't worry, you'll meet a nice Jewish girl and have six babies and become a rabbi. <laughs> it's been my dream my whole life. You were gonna be the one. Similarly, when I told her I didn't eat meat, she explained that the chicken soup is vegetarian, just fish out the chicken and the meat. <laughs> then she slowly moved on, as Jewish mothers do, to a subtle but reluctant acceptance. They were trying to appease me when I would visit them for holidays by explaining that we brought you something to eat. It's a kosher $13 vegetarian meal that was very expensive. <laughs> Massive family feast would be prepared with chicken and brisket and steak and gravy, and I would get my sad side salad. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they embraced it in their own way. My mother began making flavorless soups and vegetarian beef bean cholent. She learned foreign words like vegan. <laughs> They would take me to vegetarian restaurants and fake it. Mmm, it's just as good as kosher meat. Isn't that right, Norman? Norman, Norman, tell them it's delicious. <laughs> My father would nod, long ago robbed of his right to have a vocal opinion that didn't first emanate from her. Nowadays, when we do get together, I know I'm missing out. I'll eat my sides while my relatives talk past me to ask my brother if he's met a girl on J-Date. <laughs> I shove my iceberg lettuce around and pretend it doesn't bother me, but it does. Part of the ritual of my family gets lost, but I also feel like I'm creating new ones in their wake. My mother has come a long way too. I'm bringing my boyfriend home in a few weeks and I think they're generally excited to meet him. I have a foolproof strategy all planned out. I told my parents that Jerry loves steak. <laughs> and I promised him that my father makes the world's best T-bone. And I have a feeling everything's gonna go just fine. Because if there's one thing your meat-loving parents can bond with your gay boyfriend over, <laughs> it's making fun of their weird vegetarian son. <laughs> 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 <laughs>